but I honor the word of the Lord. And I just have a method of breaking it down and making it to the point that we do line up on line and precept up on precept. And that way when I'm finished, I'm sure and clear that I've done my job. The Lord began to deal with me about this passage of scripture a couple of days ago. And it began to stir something. A different something in me. And after you've gone around and you've preached as many places as I have and as often as I have. Sometimes you have to be reminded of the force that is behind what you do. When the Lord took me to this scripture, and I want you to just jot down right quick, Genesis the 37th chapter. Matter of fact, leave your finger there. Yes, Father, I'll do it that way. Leave your finger there in the first Timothy and go to Genesis 37. And if you don't want to, you can just leave yourself right there. And I'll just, I'll just read where I'm going here. 37... And I'm going to go down to um, the third verse. Now Israel, and I'm reading from the Amplified Bible, loved Joseph more than all his children. Because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a distinctive long tunic with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved Joseph more than all of his brothers, they hated him and could not say peace in friendly greeting to him or speak peaceably to him. And when they saw that the father loved him, they hated him. Somebody just got that. I heard about three amens and somebody just got that. God began to let me know that the, the young people out there now, and I say the young people because not that I'm that old, but I've got common sense enough to know that I'm not a young people no more. <laughs> you don't stand up and be 43 years old talking about you the young people. You're not the young people. <laughs> but the young people have a saying uh, where I come from in New York. They say, people ought not play a hate. They, they really shouldn't hate on you. But what the Lord began to reveal to me in this is that in this last move of what God is about to do in our lives, if you're, if you're anywhere along where I am, I'm feeling a shift happening in my ministry and in my life and all around me all of a sudden everything around me nothing is familiar to me anymore i, I don't feel uh, my my areas of familiarity the thing that i thought i had my niche in now it's switched to something else and so then you feel yourself being switched and turned and changed and tossed and, and flipped. And the only explanation you can give is that you know that it's the Lord. You, you can't explain it to anybody, but you know that God is doing a different work in you. And that's why you got to understand that, that, that when you start feeling the pressure from your peers, and I'm not talking about the world because this next warfare that we are about to go through, we're going to go through this warfare from the so-called brethren in the church. And you got to know that, that that you are being hated because God has put his hands on you and he has chosen you for such a time as this and when people are coming against you it is your sign that you are on schedule I feel God in here I'm already preaching and I didn't think I was gonna stop preaching that quick Whew. I gotta calm down because because when he gave me this, I'm telling you, I, it did something for me. I'm on schedule. Folk talk about you because you're on schedule. People lie on you because you're on schedule. But one thing I love about God, when God makes up in his mind that he's got something in his mind with your name on it, can't nothing and nobody stop what God is about to do. Can I just tell you something? Not even you can stop it. 
that's why if you anything like me you ought to be feeling the Lord by now starting to go in other areas of your life and purify you you ought to start hearing God now saying put that down not that I don't want you to do that when when two years ago it used to be all right but now God is he's calling you to another level of accountability because there's something else that he has to do with you and oh God and he can't afford for anybody to look at you and be able to point their finger at you so he said put that down don't touch that don't do that don't handle that don't say anything don't defend yourself don't explain it don't try to justify what I'm doing in you because a carnal mind cannot understand spiritual things, my God. Woo! I want to get through this tonight. I really. I feel something pushing me in my back. I want to get through this. I want to be good tonight. And I want to just teach. I want to keep my makeup on for a change. I'm trying to... <laughs> but the fifth verse said, and I know that we've read this so many times, but the fifth verse said, now Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brothers and they hated him still more. Now, I want you to get this. I want you to go down to the ninth verse. I want you to see something. After he told it to his brothers. Now, in the natural, I've heard people say, and I've said it myself, that this was a mistake. That Joseph should not have said anything to his brothers. And then, as I begin to pray and read over what it was God was showing me, the Lord began to open up something to me about this. He said, in the carnal mind, in the carnal mind, people say that Joseph shouldn't have said anything to his brothers. But the Spirit of the Lord began to show me that in order for God to authenticate the thing that he has called you to do, it has to go through a certain process in other words somebody has got to find out what God has up his sleeves where you are concerned because God needs somebody you ain't gonna get this to come against it so he can prove to you that it is authentic See, anybody can have a vision. Anybody, anybody can have a dream. Anybody can say, God told me something. God told me this, God. But I'm going to tell you something. The only way that you can prove, and I mean legitimately prove, that what God has put in your belly, that it is from the Lord, it has to be tried in the fire. Oh, my God. I'm preaching to somebody else in here. I'm preaching to somebody else in here beside myself. I know that. Because if God done spoke something to you and you still shout, hallelujah, well, praise God, he gave it to me. And I just going to, well, 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 let me, let me, let me bust your bubble right here. Let me help you out. Anytime God gives you anything to do, my God, you might as well get ready for the gates of hell to come against it. Now, why does the gates of hell have to come against it? Because, watch this, because that thing has been put on the inside of you. And you've got to be the person that's going to birth out the vision in prayer. But where you are in prayer right now, there's not enough power in your prayer to push that thing out to the level that God wants it in. So God said, I know what I'll do. I'll bring some warfare. Uh-huh. I'll bring some lies. And, uh, oh, oh God, I'll let everybody turn against them so I can put them on their face before me and I can charge. Woo, woo. I better leave that alone right there. Whew. Woo! 
See, lately I've been, I've been feeling a different level of God stepping up on me greater than it's ever have before because, oh Jesus, tell somebody God's using this warfare. He's, he's using this warfare. He's using everything that the enemy brings against you. The devil cannot step up on you without permission from God. God, can I touch that? Can I touch that? Can I touch that? Can I touch that? God say, uh-huh, go and touch it. God, God, can I put my hands on this one? Can I yeah, uh-huh, go ahead. Go ahead. You know why? You know why? Because, because first Timothy, oh God, the 18th chapter, the 18th verse, first verse, first Timothy, first verse, 18, uh, uh, first chapter, 18th verse, says, this charge, God, I love you. God, I love you. Yes, God. I'm going to read this from the Amplified Bible. This charge and admonition I commit in trust to you, Timothy, my son, in accordance with the prophetic intimations which I formerly received, watch this, concerning you, so that inspired and aided by them, you may wage the good warfare. Lord, I love the way that reads. Okay, God, so what are you saying to us? So then, so then what are you saying is that, is that what I am carrying is my assignment from the Lord. It is not a good idea, but it is a charge. Can I just break this down? Do you mind if I take my time and just break this down? See, a lot of us walking around talking about, oh, God called me to do something, and, and I, just, I just know it was the Lord. No, that's a good idea. How do I know it's a good idea? Because if it is a charge from the Lord, then you ought to be able to mark the spot. Because let me tell you, the Bible says that God would do no thing except he first reveal it to the prophet. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, the reason why you're still here after all of the warfare that you've been through is because there has been a prophetic word that has been spoken over your life. And once God puts his word out, he cannot and will not take it back. God I feel something in that right there see the reason why God is obligated now to finish his work in you because this charge this thing that you keep feeling in your belly you know sometimes you're in church and sometimes you're in your car sometimes you're at school and at work and you'll feel something all of a sudden you ain't even praying and you'll feel something like something just jumping in your spirit oh God is there anybody that that happened to beside me see See, see, that's the spirit of God. That's your charge that is down in there obeying the prophetic word. My God, that is your charge making sure that the things that God said, that it is going to come to pass. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God cannot complete what he desires to do in your life until you got a word from God. Oh, y'all. See what he revealed to me the other day. He said, do you know I got people that are down there in the earth realm trusting me for stuff I ain't never told them I was going to do? He said, do you not know that there are people that are holding on to faith for stuff that is their idea? And that's why they're discouraged talking about, well, I don't know when it's going to come to pass. Because God never said that. Because I'm going to tell you something. You've got to first get in the presence of God. And you got to second hear a word from the Lord. Because when God gives you a word from him my god i don't care who comes against what god said in other words the greater the warfare the more you feel your tongues getting stronger the more you feel the power of god on your life getting stronger the more your praise begin to go to another level your worship begin to go to another level oh i'm not hearing nobody saying that your prayer life begin to go to another level why because you know what this ain't an idea i got a word from the lord God said this. How do I watch this? How do I know it's gonna come to pass? God said this. Wait, wait, wait. 
Well, well, how do I know? How do I know that it wasn't my imagination? Well, let me clarify that. I'll tell you how you can know that it's God and it's not your imagination. Because anything that God gives you, he's going to always give you something that you cannot do. Now, I just may break out and just stop just praising God all by myself right there. Because y'all ain't got to praise God with me. See, 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 you, you ought to praise God knowing that when God tells you something, you ain't got enough money to do it. You ain't got enough connection to do it. God, God, you don't know nobody that can help you do it. But something inside of you still won't let the vision go. And the more, oh God, the worse it gets, the more you keep trusting God. Oh God. Woo! Why don't you look at somebody and say, I ain't got enough money, but God said it. Uh-huh. I ain't got no connection right now, but God said it. Uh-huh. I don't even know how this thing gonna work out. But I know what God told me. How do I know I know? Because I still praise God. Because I still believe. Because I can still see it. Because I can still feel it. Oh my. Y'all gonna make me get ahead of myself. Y'all gonna make me get ahead of myself. If you broke, you on schedule. See, that's how I know God has got to do it now. That's how I know it's gonna be God that's gonna do it. Because he put a vision, he put a charge in my spirit. He said, I'm trying to take you back. I'm trying to take you back to Genesis. You said that I live on the inside of you. Is that what you said? That I'm trying to take you back to Genesis where I, God, stepped out on nothing and created everything by what I spoke into existence okay sit down because I sit down because we about to do something in here you watching by day star honey you on schedule God hey, is about to show out in your situation <laughs> Woo. see Genesis 37 and 13 Genesis 37 and 13 y'all we going somewhere now I'm telling you it's about to get ugly in here now here he is with a vision with a dream and his father says to him I want you to go out and find your brothers I want you to I want you to go and uh, look for your brothers and and uh, give them a message from me. Now, 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 here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This is how I know this thing is, this thing is authentic. Because in order for your vision that God has given you to be proven to be authentic, you got to be able to work an assignment with the vision in you. See, what you're doing now is your assignment. That's why they can sit you anywhere. That's why you ain't got to give me a front row seat. That's why I can vacuum the floor. Because though I look like a janitor, there's a vision. There. You just, 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 just tell somebody, what you see on me right now is just my assignment. Tell them this is not the vision. But tell them I got to work the assignment with a vision in me. Because God got to prove to me that the vision is real. So that's why you see people driving little raggedy cars. And you say, how you doing, Sister Waterman? And praise God, I'm blessed. So why? That's 
about you see people going through it, you know they're going through it at home. And they, every time you see them at church, they... So what's she shouting about? I know her husband is a drug addict. What's she praising God for? Oh, her kids is crazy. Why he dancing? He ain't got but 20 members. No, no, no. I'm dancing not for what I see on the outside. Oh, oh my God. I'm dancing because I got a vision. I'm dancing because eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into your ears the things that God has in store. Come on, you better tell somebody, don't play me, don't play me. Because you don't know who you sitting next to. And I'm going to you. You better tell your neighbor, don't play me, don't play me now. Give me my respect because you don't know what God has planted on the inside. Don't be tricked by what you see. Baby, don't you be tricked by this little polyester suit I got on. Because standing down in this polyester is a worldwide ministry. But I'm going to you. But I got to go through my assignment. Why do I have to go through this assignment? Because the Bible said, y'all ain't gonna make me do this this early. I'm hollering like I'm crazy. The Bible said uh, that he that is faithful over, uh, over a little, God is about to make him ruler over much. So tell him, I'm just, I gotta just walk through this little thing right here. I got to prove myself faithful right here. I got to go ahead and vacuum the floor and speak in tongues while I'm vacuuming. I got to be willing to clean the church bathroom and not complain about it. Oh, come on. I got to be willing to serve the pastor tea and shine his shoes and wash his car. Because you know what? There's a vision on the inside of me. I may look like a car boy. I may look like a hostess. But there is a, there is, there is a, there is a. There is a charge that is on the inside of me that is working according to my prophecy. And that's why I feel in the Holy Ghost right now that somebody ought to start waking up your prophecy. Can I just make an announcement? I don't care what you done did wrong. God knew what you was going to do before you did it. But God sent me as a prophet tonight to tell you, wake up your prophecy. Because the vision cannot come alive until... No, you can't quit. I said you can't quit. I said you can't quit if you wanted to. How many times have I wanted to quit? Quitting ain't in me. Because a person with a vision in their belly can't quit. Because your vision keeps you alive. My God, my God. Your vision keeps your hands going up in church when you don't even feel like praising God. I, all I had is about 10 people to just say something right there. Honey, your vision will make you run across the floor and everything in your life is turned upside down and it don't look like nothing is working out but your vision is what's in control. Y'all sit down, sit down. I got I to... Gotta, I, gotta, I just got a little bit, little bit ways to go here. Okay, okay, okay. 37, 5 and 9, he get a dream. 37, 13, he gets an assignment with a dream in him. 37, 15, now this right here, get me to help somebody. Joseph goes out to do what his father told him to do, and he gets out there and gets lost. <laughs> oh, God. He gets out there and gets turned around. Now, I may not be talking to nobody. I told y'all I'm going to preach to me tonight. So that's all right. So if I fall out, y'all just bear with me. I hope y'all got a backup preacher because I'm about to run right clean out in that highway. Because God is talking to me right here. 
See, if you ever got lost while you got a vision, well, you don't know if you should keep preaching, if I should not preach, if I should go full time in the ministry, if I, if I shouldn't go full time, well, I went full time, and as soon as I quit my job, then everything, the, the people stopped calling me. Well, well, do I go back to working part time, or, or do I come over here and work part time and preach half the time, or do I just trust God and stay over here? Okay, do, okay, do he want me to stay at this church, or, or do, oh, but then when I go over here, I really enjoy the worship. Well, okay, but then I'm going through over here, but should I, should I leave here, or should I stay? Here and go through the fire, or should I, or should I go and join another church? Or, or wait, 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 wait. See, see, see. If you, if you ain't never got lost while you were carrying your vision, then baby, you ain't on schedule because, because there ought to come a time once while you carrying this thing that you don't even know what you're doing. What the, am I called to preach? Uh, should I be preaching? I mean, is it worldwide? Is it local? I mean, am I an intercessor? Oh, okay, well, am I a prophet or am I a pastor or am I, am I? I, Lord, I don't know. I don't know. Here, here it come now. Lord, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Then God said, good. Because that's where I've been trying to get you. Because your intellect is in my way. Because you're looking at everybody else and how they're doing it. And you're trying to fix your ministry like somebody else's. When oh God, when I called you to be you. So I'm going to let you go ahead and try to be like somebody else. And I'm going to wait till you get good and confused and turned around and lost. Lost with a vision in you. Have anybody ever been there besides me? Where God done showed you something big and you don't know the first step to get to where you're trying to get to. And every which way you turn is locked up. Okay, well let's keep on moving. Come on, because I'm going to prove to you you got a vision in you from God. I'm going to show somebody tonight that this thing that you got is a charge from God. Because he went, watch this, he went from being lost Till his brother said, you know what? Let's kill him. I don't think they got that. I don't think y'all got that. Not the worldly people out on the streets. But your brothers and sisters in Christ said, let's kill him. As a matter of fact, watch this. How do you know when you got a vision from God? How do you know when you've been called by God? Because the Bible said they stripped him of the clothes that his father had given him. In other words, your vision has got to go through a stripping. The favor that you thought you had has got to be stripped off of you. I'm not hearing nobody talk right there. In other words, you've got to appear to the public, oh God, that they done set the benediction over what God has called you to do. In other words, all of your divine connections have got to fall in. And then you've got to be thrown in a pit by up cannot go anywhere cannot move forward cannot move backwards everything is dark you don't know where nothing is who am I talking to because God's trying to show you that what I put on the inside of you can survive in a pit it can cause oh my God it can oh God it can survive in the darkness and watch this it don't have to have the favor of man to work and operate I just spoke something right there because I've been hearing too many people say well I'm waiting on God to open up a door well I'm just waiting on God to open up a door I'm just waiting on God to just send me somebody and God said you ain't got to do you y'all ain't say he said you ain't got to do you I think you forgot I was God I ain't got to send you nobody I can do everything I want to do in your life by myself You waiting on God to open up a door and God is waiting on somebody to trust him to walk through a wall. Whoa. He said, you ain't got me yet because if you really get me, you will understand that I'm the door and the door is already in you. And when you got the door in you, you can walk through a wall with a door. I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think you, I don't, I don't think you understand what God just spoke. 
I don't think you understand. In other words, if it's a real vision, it's got to have a pit experience. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not getting nobody really to, re to, re to really get that in their spirit. And why do I say that? Well, why, why does it have to have a pit experience? Because God is looking way down the road there. And God is already seeing that when you get down there, Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ain't nobody going to be able to get the glory but God. See, that's why, that's why right there where you are, right there where your circumstance is, if you got a real vision from God, you ought to be able to praise God and say, God, I thank you, God, I thank you, God, I praise you, God, I praise you, because you know what, I'm on schedule, I'm on, I'm on time, okay, I'm, I'm right, I'm right where I'm supposed to be, and, and that's why the devil don't want us to get this passage of scripture right here, because if we ever get this, then we'll be able to recognize that where God is about to take us, we right on the edge, right, right there, right, right. Darkness means I'm right there. The pit means I'm right there. God, when they strip you, that means I'm right on the edge. I'm about to step into the promise. Oh my God. When things start going bad, that ain't the time to cry, baby. That ain't the time to get depressed. That's the time to praise God. Because God is about to step over in your situation. See, I know you probably sitting next to somebody right now that just came to camp meeting. And you probably sitting next to somebody that said, I don't feel like praising God tonight. And I don't feel like jumping like that. But you better tell them, baby, I'm sorry. I want to repent to you right now. Because I may knock your weave out, honey. I may jump all over your purse. Because you sitting next to somebody that's on the verge of a vision being birthed out. So you know what? I can't hold my seat. Oh, my shock out of the most. You looking at somebody that the devil counted for dead. You looking at somebody that the devil thought it was over. You looking at somebody that didn't think they were going to make it. But God was in the process of birthing forth a vision. Y'all tell somebody I'm hollering like this because I'm birthing something. Tell somebody I'm jumping like this because I'm birthing something. Tell somebody I'm screaming like this because my spirit is in travail. Because something is about to come forth. All about Kasaya. They tell them this thing is bigger than me. All about Kasha. That's why I gotta praise God to get the anointing upon me so I'll be able to push out my charge. said that the children have come to the birth canal but there's not enough strength to bring forth but the devil is a liar everything that God has charged my belly to do I'm gonna have the power Ooh. you better mount up I said you better mount up you better stop coming to church trying to look so cute. You better mount up. You better stop trying to be sophisticated. You better recognize what's on the inside. You better recognize it's going to take some power. It's going to take another level of the anointing. It's going to take a different prayer life. Not them old stale tongues that you've been speaking in for the last 10 years. It's going to take a new baptism. It's going to take a fresh wind. It's going to take a new fire to burst forth an end time vision. He said here, God, I'm, I, I feel some moment. Y'all gonna make me hurt myself in here. Oh, 
I'm telling you, I feel crazy right now. I feel crazy because I can feel that thing breaking. I can feel it, sister. I'm on the edge. God is about to do something that I've never thought would ever happen. Who come Because the Bible said that when Joseph, now let me show you something. Joseph got ready. They came and they pulled him out the pit, Pastor. And God showed me something I never saw before. Sister, as many times as I read this scripture, he said, you got to be able to let somebody come. And they got to pull you out of the pit and act like they're helping you. But they're pulling you out so they can use you. Whoa! Oh God, oh God. You got to be aware of the false help. Because let me tell you something, the devil knows that God is about to do something. So he's going to try to send you some false help. He's going to try to send somebody along to help you. He come about Shia. But I wish I had somebody in here that's able to look that thing right in the face. I don't need no help. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I don't need no help. I know you're trying to encourage me, but God want me to walk through this thing. No, no, no. You can't prophesy to me and tell me to be encouraged. Because you know what? I, listen, it can't come from you. I got a charge in my belly. Because I'm going to tell you something. When it's time for you to get to where God. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this church. He was walked, brought out of prison, sold, and walked to the chief house by an executionist. Then God said, you got to be able to, I got to be able to train your spirit how to walk with somebody that you know ain't for you. I can't get nobody talking here to me. See, a lot of y'all got your friends telling you, now if I was you, I wouldn't hang with her because you know, she ain't no good for you. Watch out for her. And here you are telling myself, I ain't going to be with her no more. No, 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 no. Wrong move to make. Because God got to train you how to walk with somebody that you know don't like you without you exposing the vision. He got to let you walk with somebody that think they got the power to execute you. That think they control your ministry. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing in here. He got to bring some folk in your church pastors that make you think that if all oh God, that without them the church can't make it. Without their tithes and offering, the church would go broken. But God said, hang in there, hang in there, hang in there, hang in there. Because remember, you got a charge in you. And when you got a charge in you, it ought to make you, oh God, it automatically give you charge over stuff. When you got a charge in you, you become in charge over. Charge in, charge over. I can't get you to do Charge in, charge over. I can't get y'all to see that. Charge in, charge over. When Joseph got to Potiphar's house, he came there as a slave. And the day he got there, y'all ain't saying nothing in here. Potiphar looked at him and said, you in charge. I don't think you got that what am I what did I just say okay I paraphrase that it doesn't matter what position you in it doesn't matter where you sitting at it doesn't matter what's going on around you you are in charge good God have mercy you control the atmosphere you control your destiny you control what goes out and what comes in you are in control because you got a charge in that makes you have charge over wait 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 don't take me too fast oh my god now I'm, he's in he's in part of his house bought like a slave stripped of his favor so he ain't even got on nothing he ain't even got on no garment that make him look like he prospers see watch it watch it people of God well you know what they say gotta have this kind of suit gotta have these kind of shoes suit gotta be cut like this it gotta be a St. John knit for folk to thank you somebody but some people got, got hit in a polyester suit and some plastic shoes because the first shall be last and the last shall be first y'all don't hear me when I'm talking in here 
it's about to be a switch in the kingdom it's about to be the change of God and the very people that you didn't think that God was going to use are going to be the very people that God pick up because God is going to testify for you that this one right here they went to the pit and didn't complain this one right here got stripped of his garment this one right here was put in a dark place but they had a charge in them and this one has proven to me that in spite of where they are they cannot quit they will not quit they shall not quit they cannot quit because they got a charge your neighbor and tell your neighbor this ain't no idea in my belly this is a charge said neighbor you looking at somebody that's done been to hell and back you looking at somebody that didn't know how they was going to make it but tell your neighbor said neighbor I got a charge to keep and a God to glorify say I It's about to hit. That's what I heard God said. It's about to hit. I heard God say, I'm about to change it before the year is out. I can't get nobody to go with this prophecy. I'm going to say it to maybe somebody in TV land because maybe y'all don't want to get it. But God said, Oh my God. I just heard the Holy Ghost said, They're going to see it turn before the year is out. He come up about He come down at Amosha. I heard the Lord said, You're going to get your respect before the year is out. He called it an emotion. I hear the Lord saying, I'm about to walk through a wall for you before the year is out. Okay, take this to the bank. That by December 31st, your situation is about to change because God has put a charge in your spirit. Say yes. Some of y'all is giving God that little religious praise. Why do you think I read First Timothy first? Because when the prophecy come, the work got to follow. When the prophecy come, it's got to come to pass. You thought I came here to preach it. I didn't come here to preach it. I came to prophesy that by December 31st, everything about your life is going to start shifting. It's going to start turning. Hold up outside. And what's on the inside is gonna start coming up. Whoa. See. to get out because the vision doesn't start showing out he come about shaya you don't start speaking in tongues in the grocery store you don't start prophesying everywhere you go he come about shaya who am i preaching to tonight you don't start prophesying to yourself now you ain't even waiting for nobody to encourage you you don't start looking at yourself in the mirror and saying self thou shalt not die there go that thing right there for the last three weeks God been telling me pastor that every time he hollered through me like that that he's breaking up something that he's breaking somebody out I'm screaming somebody's vision somebody's vision is coming alive somebody's vision is going into operation hold up I saw ya Let me tell you something. Oh, 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 oh. Let me tell you something. Woo. 
if the devil only knew if he only knew who you were let me tell you something Joseph, I told y'all I came with a word I told y'all I ain't playing now cause something about to break open I'm not playing now cause back desert folk is about to take their place broke folk getting ready to build stuff and still ain't got no money to go with me because pastor about a couple of months ago three years ago I start praying and I said God I want you to deliver me I said I want to be set free from America deliver me from America deliver me from Americanized church I said give me an African anointing I want stuff to happen that ain't never happened before I want to get beyond the headaches and the back aches and, and the knee aches and all of that I said, God, I want to walk in the supernatural. And God sent a man from Africa to the Bismarck. And he laid hands on me. And ever since I got that impartation, I believe God can do anything. I don't think you hear what I'm saying. Then God began to recharge my anointing. Then God began to say to me, everywhere you go, when you open up your mouth and speak it, I shall bring it to pass on the day and the time you say. So let me repeat myself. By this December the 31st everything in your life is about to change Hold on. you will not take for you that you are into 2003 Hold up, I shot on the coast. You get me to buy houses with no money. Hold up, I can show you. You get me to build churches and you ain't got no money. Y'all don't want to go with me on this. You don't want to go with me on this. You about to add the youth wing to the church and you ain't even got no money. But God said, I don't need nobody that's got money. I need the people that I put a vision in and a charge in to just say yes. Because when you tell God, yes, the vision shall. Let me quit. This right here, give me to mess you up. Because this right here is where God been trying to get us. And God didn't know how to get you there. Oh my God, my God. But this right here get me to get you. Because this right here got me. In the 39th chapter. And the first verse it said. And Joseph was brought up. Down, was brought down to Egypt. And part of an officer of Pharaoh. The captain and chief executioner of the royal guard in Egyptian bought him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him down there. But, y'all, I, I can't even hardly finish this. I'm telling you. Can I just say that one more time? has done to you all that he thought wasn't going to happen all the sleepless nights all the time you travail and pray and didn't see nothing the second verse said but the Lord was with him see that's the part the devil forgot that's the part Satan didn't remember that's the part he couldn't see that in spite of what he was doing God was with you y'all can't shout right there y'all can't shout right there you listen let me, wait, 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 wait. let me help you with something let me help you with this let me tell you what you got to say you can't wait another second you got to say this right now you can just whisper it matter of fact you ain't even got to get as excited as I am but I just that you sit at the corner of your mouth just close your mouth like a ventriloquist and just speak it out a little bit and just say but the Lord was with me 
but but the Lord is with me but the Lord is with me I know what I've been through but the Lord is with me I know what the devil been saying about me but the Lord is with me I just came out of a pit and I stink and I haven't even been given the royal clothes but the Lord but the Lord is with me I've been walking with somebody that can take my life but the Lord is with me I've been walking with somebody that can backstab me but the Lord is with me I've been walking around people that's been lying on me but the Lord was with me as a matter of fact I'm bound up in somebody else's house but the Lord is with me he they got somebody watching me but the Lord is with me they got somebody guarding me but the Lord is with me they got somebody making sure that I don't get no further than I am right now but one thing they got to understand that they may not see that the Lord is with me now, 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 now this the amplified Bible this the now y'all just forgive me okay cause y'all standing there looking at me like this woman on clean flat lost her mind I'm not the one leader that was here last year y'all don't want to hear that I'm not her because since then I didn't realize that the Lord is with me since then I didn't recognize I don't need nobody else cause if God be for me I can't get nobody to say that if God be for me who when what how big how tall what color can be against me because no weapon that's formed against me can't prosper can't prosper can't prosper can't prosper can't prosper why why can't it prosper because the weapon that comes from the enemy is not naturally spiritual and in order for it to prosper the bible tells me that that which goes in is what god prospers but guess what it's too late because i already got a vision in me and can't nothing else get in me therefore what shot at me cannot prosper because my vision now i'm gonna quit right here i'm gonna quit right here pastor because god start talking to me he said what you waiting on he said what are you waiting on I said, well, I'm wait. he said, what you waiting on? He said, what are you waiting on to do what I told you to do? Well, God, I, I, what are you waiting on? I said, well, you know, we, we, our ministry is in this school and, you know, we hardly got what we need. And he said, what are you waiting on? I said, well, you know, if we can just save a little bit more. He said, what are you waiting on? I said, well, maybe, well, maybe we're just waiting on us to get a few more partners. Oh, God. I just hit something. He said, what I'm about to do for you ain't coming from the kingdom. I'm finna prophesy something here that's getting ready to mess some of y'all up. I'm finna prophesy something over y'all lives that's getting ready to mess y'all up. God said the world is about to build your church the world is about to get your ministry off the ground okay all right all right all right all right I can't get nobody to go with me on that you don't get it do you Okay, let me just break this down because I don't I can't get you, you can't miss this. <sighs> Talking to myself, just God. Because this right here is gonna get you. 
He said, bondage is necessary for a spiritual breakthrough. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you this. I'm gonna show you this. Bondage is necessary for a spiritual breakthrough. Can I say that one more time? Bondage is necessary for a spiritual breakthrough. Well, how is that? Because if your physical means are free and your spiritual is free, watch this, then your physical will have you running into stuff with your spirit and settling settling for what the world call blessed see here we go here we go let me help us out let me help us out you know i want to build a church you know me and my wife believe in god for a house and you know we believe in god for we believe in God for a car, and I want God to bless me with a car, and I want God to just really, really bless my ministry. And uh, you know, uh, you know, I've been coming to camp meeting for a while, and one day, maybe Pastor gonna let me preach in camp meeting. What God began to show me, He said, "Some of y'all got music ministries and all of that." Talking about, you know what? I just if, if the radio station would just play my record, you don't get it, you don't get it, you don't get it, because why you why you believe in God for something local to happen? God may want your record to take off in Japan. See, global, worldwide. I, I, don't, I don't hear nobody. I don't hear y'all. See, you believe in God for your business to break out here, and God may want your business to break out in Australia. I'm not, I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. See, you talking about, you talking about, you know, well, whoa, God, God wants us to have a powerful, powerful youth ministry. No, uh, too small, too small. God may want y'all to pick some Christians that's over in Zimbabwe and Australia and bring them over here and let them go to school over here for one year. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. Don't think so small. Don't think small. Think big. Think huge. Think worldwide. Don't think Houston. Think worldwide. Think about you preaching on the internet to people all over the world. I'm not hearing y'all. Think about you taking the whole youth group and going to Australia and running a revival. Think about you living in Australia for a solid year and evangelizing. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me in here. So God has to God has to take you and bind you. Well, you can't go to the left. You can't go to the right. You look behind you, you can't go nowhere. You look in front of you, you can't. You are, you are trapped in. Preacher, come here. Stand right here. Come here, stand. Come, man of God. Stand behind me. Come, man of God. You stand over here facing me. You stand right here facing me. Face me. Trapped. Don't let me get out, okay? You're going to move this way. Trapped. You call up a pastor friend. Can you help me with this way? Trapped. Okay, God told me to do this. He told me I got this ministry. I'm going to go this way. Trump. This one over here invites you to preach it. The day before you get ready to go, they call and cancel you. Trump. So then you say, well, I can't, I can't go nowhere. I, I, I can't do that. But the Bible said that though Joseph was a slave, 
Yet he prospered and he was successful. Can I tell you why? Can I tell you why? Because when God traps your flesh in, it causes your spirit to travel to another place in God. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. I can't get nobody to say nothing. When God allows the enemy to trap your spirit in, then it makes you have to stand still. Yo, watch this. Hey, yo, you can't go to the left. You can't go to the right. So something happens to you. You stand still and start going shot. And the Bible said, Y'all ready for this? You ready for this? I'm going to read just what's on this page. Though a slave, but the Lord was with Joseph and he, though a slave, was a successful and a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Y'all didn't get that. He did not move. Can I help your spirit? Well, God, if you just send me to a better city, maybe my ministry will break out. Nope! He did not move him. But though he was a slave, he was successful as a slave. Oh, y'all better get this. You better get this. You better get what is God saying. I'm not going to do this thing based upon what you got around you. I'm going to do it based upon what you got on the inside. Uh oh. I'm going to say, give, give me two minutes. Just say this. The man was a slave in Potiphar's house. Prospering. Being successful. Watch this. I want you to understand that what you got in you is not ideal. I want to show you that you've been doing it all wrong. I'm trying to show you that you've been waiting on something to happen for you when God is saying something that already happened in you. I'm going to say something that's going to hurt you. I'm trying to show you that you can walk into it right now. I'm not lying to you. You can ask my staff. Ever since God gave me this word, I said, now. Now. Here you go. Well, Lord, if it be your will. It is his will. Now. God said, what are you waiting on? Well, I'm waiting on you, God. No, you're not. God said, I'm waiting on you to open up your mouth and decree what's in your spirit. I'm waiting on you to speak those things which be not as though they were. I'm, oh, God. I'm waiting on somebody to get high enough in the anointing and lean over and take a look down in your spirit and say, I command you to come forth and perform now. Well, I ain't got enough money. So what? I don't know nobody. So what? I don't know how it's going to happen. So what? Go for it. Can I prophesy that to you? Go for it. Okay, y'all. Y'all. You want to move? Stop packing a box. Stop at the grocery store tonight and get you some boxes. Pack you a box and put it in the living room floor. They said, we're moving. You want a house? Go for it. Well, I ain't got no credit. God already know that. Go for it. Oh, y'all, 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 y'all. Because you know what? Yeah, God is able, but he ain't able. He is able, but he ain't able. He is able, but he ain't able. He ain't able because you ain't able. He's only able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that's in you. So if you ain't got no power, he ain't able. Oh, God. I got to make this one point.
in four minutes. Four minutes from now. A new boldness. A new level of stupid faith. A crazy anointing. Is getting me to sit down in your spirit. And from this night on. Y'all ain't ready. In three and a half minutes. Everybody in your house going to think you crazy. I can't get nobody to go with me, God. God, you sent me here, but I can't get nobody to go with me. In three minutes, you're going to start believing God for stuff that you ain't never been able to believe him for. In two minutes, in 35 seconds, the anointing of God that's in you for ministry is about to step up to another level. And that vision is about to go and get stuff for you that you ain't never had. God, I wish I had somebody to help me say this thing in here. Okay, let me tell you something. Now watch this. Let me show you bondage is necessary. Because when he was in Potiphar's house, I close with this. Potiphar's wife lied on him. Y'all know the story. And he went to jail on death row. Everybody that was in jail with him was folk that was there on death row. And while he was there, God began to stir up. See, let me tell you something. The first vision you will see, you will see it on good grounds. First time God showed it to you, He'll show it to you in wonderful circumstances. Then He allowed to go to hell and back. Then He got to put you in a hell situation so that you can get the anointing that He's placed in you revived. So he put him in there with some folk that was about to die so he could revive his ability to dream. And you wonder why you in the situation you in? Because God gave me to train your spirit how to prophesy in a dark place. He gave me to teach you how to not look at yourself. But he gave me to teach you if you in here tonight and lately you going through something but you've been finding yourself preaching to other people and ministering to other people and prophesying to other people that's because God is stirring up yours because he's getting you ready for the big one see he was down there getting Joseph ready to come before Potiphar y'all ain't hearing me he was getting him ready to get out of jail are you hearing what I'm saying he was so you on schedule because you preaching to other people and you feel bound yourself maybe I ain't talking to nobody here but myself you preaching to other people and ministering to them and you sitting up in church and God tell you to write them a note and bless them go get such a song for a hundred dollars and you need ten thousand okay go, go, go over here and speak a word to her and you get home as soon as you shut your door you feel the burden as soon as you close your door you feel depressed all over again you didn't feel like you've been to church you said God what you doing why you got me all bound up and you got me preaching to people because I'm trying to get you ready. I'm trying to get you stirred up. I'm trying to show you that the power of God and the anointing in your life is not based upon what you feel and what you think. But you've been chosen by God and ain't nothing you can do about it. I wish I had somebody to talk back in here with me with that one. He got him down there and let him start prophesying to the baker and the butler. Now watch this. How do I know that you get me to go to the level? Because when he got him down there, God said, before you get out, matter of fact, tell somebody, your vision got to go to jail at least once. I ain't got nobody sitting right there. I said, tell somebody, your vision got to go to jail at least one time.
you got to preach from prison. You got to pray from prison. Come on here somebody. I'm waking up your spirit right now. The Holy Ghost is charging you again right now. You got to be able to do what you say God called you to do. In jail. Or else it ain't real. You a copycat. You a counterfeit. God, who am I preaching to right now? I said you a counterfeit. If your anointing can't preach from prison, it ain't real. If you can't sing from jail, it ain't real. Because the Bible said at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. If your intercession cannot pray from prison, it ain't real. Somebody said, honey, you sure can't pray. They said, you sure got anointing in the seed. Said, baby, this ain't nothing, honey. I did this in jail. Said, where you learn to preach like that in prison? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Where you learn to prophesy like that in jail? Oh, come on here, church. Come on here, church. Come on here, church. You got to be able to have that same joy while you locked up. You got to be able to dance like that while you locked up. You got to be able to shout when you don't see your way. You got to be able to prophesy when you don't see nothing in sight. You got to be able to trust God when you can't even trace God. Why you think you're where you are? Because God said if you can see it, then it ain't faith. If you know where it is, you ain't walking in faith. If you understand it, it's not faith. He said, prophesy to these people. He started prophesying. He said, one of y'all going to get your job back. Now watch this. The other one of y'all going to die. Watch this. But he said, remember me. Watch this, y'all. When you get out, remember I'm down here. But let me show you this. Let me show you this. God had to allow that man's gift and his charge to come forth in prison. Watch this. Because the Bible said in the scripture that when the butler got out, the scripture said verbatim, he remembered him no more. Now watch this. He didn't remember him no more, Pastor. But when Potiphar had a dream and couldn't figure it out, he didn't remember him, but he remembered his anointing. See, I didn't, I didn't get nobody to say nothing right there. See, that's why God trying to charge up your anointing. Because when God get ready to do what he get ready to do in your life, ain't nobody going to remember you. They're going to say, oh, that lady that prayed, uh-huh, that one that prophesied, uh-huh, that man that preached. It's your anointing and your charge that's going to get you out. Not you. You ain't, I'm going to say this and I'm going to sit down. You ain't getting ready to get the victory because your daddy is a bishop. You ain't getting ready to come out because you the pastor. I can't get nobody saying that. God ain't getting ready to do nothing special for you because you the pastor's wife. He ain't getting ready to make a way out of nowhere because you're an evangelist. Because you got your little evangelist license and you done been to theology school. No, no, baby. The same thing that got you in trouble is the same thing he's going to use to get you out of trouble. I'm not hearing y'all say nothing. He said, it's your anointing that I'm going to remember. It's the charge that I gave you that I'm not going to forget. I'm not hearing y'all say nothing in here. I said, God said, it's going to be the charge that I gave you. It's going to be the thing that I won't forget. He goes, so I got to do that. I got to do that for him. That's why we look at the people now that we don't know how in the devil. Because I know they're saying it about me. I in the world that she preached all over. Good Lord have mercy. God, God must have been desperate. He must have had nobody else to pick. She ain't never been to Bible college. Come from the storefront church. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Get a little confused sometimes. Can't pronounce all the words in the Bible. Get to some of them big names and just go da 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 and keep on going. (laughs) 
get to them sections in the Bible where they start naming them names, I just keep on going down to the good stuff. Or oh, I'm not hearing nobody talking back to me. I don't know nothing about no Greek and Hebrew. Every time I try to study it like that, I get all confused and turned around. But when God got ready to raise me up and do what he wanted to do in me, he didn't think about, he didn't remember my Greek. He didn't remember my Hebrew. He didn't look at the fact that I had never been to Bible college. I'm not getting nobody to say nothing. He didn't look at the fact that I wasn't born in a mansion and we wasn't wealthy. But God looked at my charge. He said, this one I done put a charge in her. This one I done put an anointing in her belly. And though she went through the fire, and though she went through the storm, and though the flood came, the charge remained. The vision stayed intact. Though she been talked about, the vision stayed intact. Though she been through the rain, the vision stayed intact. And God is gonna do what he gonna do in your life if you keep the vision intact all I need tonight all I need tonight mm -hmm, it's gonna happen yes Lord I hear you Joseph went to jail first day in jail the warden looked at him and said you in charge of all the prisons Why is it that everywhere he went that was supposed to be bondage, he ended up being in charge? Because you can't keep a person with a vision in them down. You can't put your foot on a person that's got a vision in them. God, I feel this thing in here. I feel the Holy Ghost sitting all over me. You can't count a person out that's got a vision in them. Because when they got a charge in them, it keeps them charged over them. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on here, church. I just wish I had somebody to go crazy right there. Because you don't even understand what I just said. I said when you got a charge in you, it keeps you in charge. It keeps you in charge. So when I finish this, when I finish this, It says, and Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, a place where the state prisoners were confined. So he was there in prison. Let that word go best. But the Lord. But the Lord was with me. But but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. People with a vision get mercy. Folk that's got a vision. Folks that's got a vision in them sometimes gonna make a mistake and they're gonna mess up. But the stuff that kills other folk ministry, God gives us mercy. <laughs> I can't get nobody to shout right there. Cause I know, I know I haven't been perfect, but I got a vision in me. And because vision is in me, I get mercy. Is there anybody else in here beside me that's got some stuff in your past that you should have got caught doing? Oh, y'all ain't saying that. Is there anybody in here that can look back over your life and say, I should have got busted right there. But the Lord was with me and vision was in me. And because of that, mercy. mercy and loving kindness and gave him favor in the sight of the warden the prison 
and the warden of the prison committed to Joseph's care all the prisoners who were in the prison and whatsoever was done there he was in charge of it in 30 seconds now if you ain't ready for this I want you to just go and get your purse and go home Because in 30 seconds, there's about to be a, a shift from a pit mentality. From a I'm in trouble mentality. From a I can't do it mentality. I don't know how I'm going to do it mentality. Because I hear my spirit speaking down on the inside saying that every person that is in this place and every person that is watching my television, your vision have gone through all of these processes. I'm going to say that one more time because you didn't get what I just said. Your vision have gone through all of these processes and if what I just said is the truth then that means it's time to come out let me just say this In the next 30 seconds you about to give birth you get me to birth out two kids the first one is Manasseh mean he causes me to forget all that I just came through God said forgive them forgive whoever it is for whatever they thought they did because they didn't hurt you they blessed you God I'm, finna I'm about to run in here I'm about to run in here now because God said you never would have came into the blessing you about to come into had they not did what they did so God said when we start praising him we're gonna give birth to Manasseh which means I forgive he causes me to forget Lord have mercy Jesus then you gonna keep praising him and you're gonna give birth to your second child and this is when it's gonna happen for y'all that ain't never had children before you about to birth out two kids one named Manasseh and the other one named Ephraim meaning it's time to be fruitful and multiply good God have mercy see watch this before Joseph can rule, he had to forgive his brothers for what they did. Then y'all ain't saying nothing. What am I saying? Be fruitful. That means the thing that's about to birth out in you before December 31st, you're going to have enough to help somebody else. You're going to have enough anointing to give somebody else a charge. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing in here. Wait a minute don't play don't play with this one because I'm a prophet and I know what I feel in here I said don't play with this one because God said I'm gonna do more for you in five minutes than you could have done for yourself in a lifetime he said if you take what the prophet is saying tonight my God my God my God my God the, oh Jesus oh Jesus yes lord i just heard the lord said this praise is a 24-hour breakthrough he said this ain't no praise that's gonna take weeks to happen it's a 24-hour breakthrough that means in a matter of seconds your ministry going from nothing good god have 
mercy for something that you ain't never seen y'all better come on and shout it here that means your anointing is going from this to something that's this that means your prayer life is about to go to another level your preacher is about to go to another level revelation knowledge it's coming up out of you right now because you are about to go you watch give yourself some space give yourself some room give yourself some room the bible said obey the prophet and so shall you prosper i'm in another realm i'm in another place saints he cut the bow shot he said set the captive free i've been hearing him say set the captive free i've been hearing him say when you open up your mouth you're going to set the captive free when you begin to prophesy i'm going to instantly shift their spirit to a place i'm going to give them a speed shot on schedule i'm going to give them a speed shot to obedience he said don't play with this right now give yourself some room and i mean this time yo this is a prophetic call here this ain't just camp meeting tonight it's camp meeting with a prophetic call he sent me in here as a prophet 